What I have here is actually a slightly updated version, but a repetition of uh, what was presented a year ago in uh, Toronto uh, to, to the folks there. So I apologize for any of you that, uh, that already saw it uh, for that repetition. Uh, Greg Palaylog, when, uh, when we started here today, uh, spoke also to SMS and, and uh, talked about the, the approach and the support. So I have a bit of extra information here about that, the support that IAGSA is, uh, is available to provide. Um, so you'll see a bit about that. And then also just in general about the, that change to the safety manual. So the first is the question, why was SMS added uh, to the safety manual? Uh, as Greg said himself, uh, probably the best way to summarize it is that quite simply, uh, the XCOM looked at the safety manual and uh, noticed a gap that, uh, that needed to be closed. Some of the details that uh, sort of contribute to that decision or in that, that analysis or in, 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 a, in identifying that gap, well, the first was obviously that, that SMS is a global standard, certainly in aviation but also in other industries. Um, also, the audits that Lance was doing, um, with the exclusion of 2017, but the audits before that uh, show that many of the, the safety programs that uh, are in place out there uh, were lacking in the way that they were more reactive. Right? So uh, there wasn't this proactive uh, aspect to it. There wasn't a, a proactive way of ensuring that uh, we're improving our safety and our operations. It's also the step needed to make safety programs more efficient and effective. That's essentially what, what we're saying there. So people have the safety programs, but we need to, to up it a little bit. And of course, it's needed to move our industry safety culture forward. Uh, regulatory requirements, I think uh, it's, this is a statement that we've been able to use for quite a while now, you know, that uh, from a regulatory standpoint, it's coming. If it is, doesn't already exist, it's coming. Uh, in some jurisdictions, it's a lot slower in coming than others, uh, but eventually we'll get there. Notwithstanding the regulation, there are, there are plenty of these foregoing reasons uh, for implementing SMS. So there are, there are a couple of challenges, I guess you could say, um, with uh, asking people to implement SMS that haven't, haven't done it before or don't have a similar system in place. And, and the first and foremost is that it's, it's very intimidating. You know, just the, 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 the phrase, safety management system, uh, sounds uh, very complicated and complex, when in actual fact it's not. It's not a, a large, complex, paper-driven uh, process or system. Uh, it's not this, this giant, scary monster. And it is, in fact, scalable to the size and the complexity of your operation. The good news is that most of the members are already doing it. Uh, but well, at least most of the members are already doing the vast majority of the components of, of what would constitute an SMS. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment so you'll see what I'm, I'm getting at there. And it isn't unique to aviation, even though the term SMS or safety management systems is very, you know, it's associated very closely with aviation, but SMS exists in the rail industries and shipping industries and by other names in, in all other industries. Well, most other industries, many other industries, I should say. Um, maybe it's just called an HSE management system or something similar, but it's, it's an overarching system. So to try and provide a, a bit of an idea, a bit of bit of an illustration behind what I mean when, uh, when we say that most, the good news is that most people have the components of an SMS already, uh, just haven't brought it all together. Uh, let's look, just talk about SMS versus safety programs themselves. Uh, well, a safety management system is uh, primarily proactive, so I, I already mentioned that in the beginning. It's a, it's a very important and very, uh, very big distinction between the two. Safety management system is more proactive than your traditional uh, safety programs uh, uh, because the, the safety program typically focuses on smaller areas and although you may have some of these different aspects, like you can, you can see in this illustration here, right, most people will have some form of safety policy or a safety statement. Uh, you'll have uh, perhaps a security policy, you'll do risk assessments. You'll have many of these different aspects. Uh, but they don't feed each other. The safety management system, on the other hand, 
excuse me, safety management system on the other hand, just like this nice little cog illustration shows, is driven by itself. So you have the uh, various aspects of it providing input into the safety management system and helping you, you improve. So it's not all these little autonomous um, components. When we talk about moving uh, or changing industry safety culture, I'll let you look at that image and uh, I won't ask you to answer out loud, but think for yourselves. Where would you say uh, we are as an industry, as we, you know, in that chart, as we uh, progress from either being, you know, more pathological, uh, reactive, maybe that's uh, a good place to say where we generally are, you know, where safety is important to us, but we only do things when we have a safety incident, right? We're very reactive that way. We find a problem and then we work really hard to fix it. But are we looking forward into the future? So the idea is that SMS will help us progress along uh, on, on this uh, sort of time scale or life cycle of safety culture. So what is it, uh, SMS itself? The definition that we've used, and I, I believe I've got this updated correctly, uh, and it, it should be exactly the same as in the safety uh, manual, uh, but a safety management system is a systematic organization-wide approach to managing safety. So it's a business-like approach to safety, uh, systematic, explicit, and a comprehensive process. Uh, and as with all management systems, a uh, safety management system provides for goal setting, uh, you know, your planning, a way to measure your progress, essentially looking for that continual, uh, continual improvement uh, in, in how you manage safety. And very importantly, uh, it very quickly becomes woven into the fabric of an organization and becomes part of the culture, becomes uh, part of how uh, you do business and approach those safety aspects of, of uh, our projects. Now to talk a little bit about scalability. So again, back, you know, the, the idea that this is this big, scary, complex monster. Uh, well, no, it's not. It is uh, scalable. It, safety, of course, must be managed with the same formal approach that uh, companies are using to manage other areas, such as your production, your logistics, your finances, anything else. Uh, if you think about it, you have a, a system behind that, a process behind that, and it's, and it's structured. Uh, now, just like those systems, uh, of course, we want the SMS, uh, or the SMS is scalable. So a larger company would have a much more complex uh, financial system than a, a smaller company. Well, SMS is exactly the same. So if we looked, to, to try and illustrate that idea, if we look at, uh, you know, a, just a, a generalized sort of process um, for a survey project, those processes are largely common, right, between companies. I mean, it's a, you've all, we all start from the same sort of starting point, and we all want to get to the, the a similar end point. This image is a, is a screenshot of, of a, quite a complex flow uh, flow chart, right? And it's, it's broken down. I, it's not important to, to, to know the details of it, but just to give you an understanding of the complexity of it, it's broken down into, you know, what each department might do at this different stage, you know, when you're bidding, when you're mobilizing, when you're planning, what departments or people are doing. So it can be very complex uh, or appear very complex. Now, this sketch on the, on the right-hand side is really a similar description of the, of the process, right? but much more simplified. Now, it's easy to see that a larger company with, you know, with these different departments and, and lots of different people uh, would need that clarity on what each person or each department is doing towards that end goal. In a smaller company where you have fewer people, well, it's a lot simpler and you can express it this way. So really, this is the same uh, as SMS in that you can scale these potentially complex processes to fit the size of the organization. The key is trying to figure out how to do that, and uh, I'll talk about that in a minute because uh, IX is there to help with that. So as was mentioned and as was already shown here in uh, Greg's presentation, uh, the executive approved the following recommendations that all members work towards the implementation of a safety management system consistent with the definition and which includes the basic components and elements below. Now, in the safety manual, it is actually a, a list, a bullet, sort of a 
title or a heading and a bullet point list. Uh, this illustration just has those same points shown together. Um, and there's no surprises there. These, these components are the same fundamental components in an ICAO mani uh, safety management system. Right? So we haven't reinvented the wheel there. We've tried to simplify it. So who does it apply to? Obviously, it applies to all active and associate aviation service providers. When? Well, it already applies. The recommendation was published in the, the December update uh, to the manual. And how? Well. IX is going to take is taking a collaborative approach uh, to implement to implementing SMS with members. Again, this was mentioned, and Louis touched on it as well, talking about more of a supporting role uh, to to the members. And Lance is is set up to do that. It does have this little tie-in with the questionnaire as well, right? Where you can identify not only are you able, not only are members able to get support uh, from from Lance and others. Uh, for these other items, but when it comes to SMS implementation as well, Lance is there and available. Uh, provision of the guidance material. This is the, this is the part of the presentation where I give an update, and it's the shortest part of the presentation, unfortunately. But uh, we are the technical committee, or a work group within the technical Technical Committee it has been working on uh, some guidance material for a while. Myself, I'm on, on in that group, so I'll apologize. I'll, I'll apologize uh, just for my uh, participation in it for not producing this. This is overdue. Uh, unfortunately, it's been sitting on everybody's sort of back burner. Uh, the stage we're at right now, it is it is advanced, but we have had a lot of feedback uh, from the Executive Committee, which hasn't been addressed yet. So that's where we're at. Uh, we have the document, we have the guideline, uh, but we need to, uh, to do these last few steps of, of incorporating that feedback. The purpose of the guideline itself is to provide that material in, a, in an easier uh, way to understand. So there's a tremendous amount of, of information. If you go online and you Google SMS, well, you're going to get tons of information, and it can be quite intimidating because it has existed for a long time because generally you're top hits when you try and do any research will point you towards uh, airline size and style of safety management system information. Right? So on the first click, it's just overwhelming. So what this guideline is, is uh, the goal of this guideline is to filter through all of that and uh, pr present this material in a much simpler way uh, for people to be able to understand. None of us are at the size of, of major airlines. So simplify this material, show some examples, provide some very almost SMS for dummies type guidance. You know, This is the requirement. Here are some examples of, of how it can be met right? so that we don't run off in our imagination about how complex something might be.